This conference will now be recorded. So this is Mahesh Kumawat, and we are we are just going to start the AWS uh, uh, things. So uh, you you as you guys know that uh, in the market right now, there are the multiple cloud vendors are available like AWS, uh, Azure, uh, Google Cloud, and uh, IBM Cloud also available. Software also available. So there are so many pros and cons of every every cloud, right? So uh, here we are just talking about some, you know, what AWS sort of things and uh, why the AWS is better and why why you guys the organization are putting uh, going uh, their Azure sort of things and uh, uh, which is the better uh, options for the soft layer and which are the better options for you know what different cloud vendors, right? So uh, I have just uh, you know what uh, prepared some of the you know what uh, things uh, for you right now. So this is the you know what the first thing is, is the rising part. So uh, whatever the things would be, it is very important for every company to uh, uh, you know what calculating the the pricing part all the time, right? So uh, currently infrastructure of the company and the uh, the you know what uh, when we are going to implement the AWS or Azure sort of implement uh, migration over the uh, data center to the, to the cloud. And so what is the difference uh, part of the pricing sort of things? So we we will just going to uh, you know what uh, going for some migration sort of things. So uh, every uh, you know what uh, once you you have to know that every time that uh, once you're going to uh, working into the data center. So first of all you have to understanding the basic about uh, the uh, you know what uh, BCB uh, you know what business continuity plan and disaster recovery plan you have to keep in mind. So I hope that everyone have the uh, you know what uh, two or three years experience on the system admin or network admin or different profiles so that each each one of them can understand the universe prospects for the Azure Azure or AWS sort of things. So the AWS and the Azure and the different cloud vendors are basically you know what uh, the physical infrastructures move to the cloud at the same time and what is the cost benefit what is the resiliency what is the resiliency and the scalability and the availability of the resources same time it's very important sort of things. So uh, I have just prepared some of uh, you know what the you know what uh, we are working on the production environment right. So we have you know what calculated the benchmarking of the hardware versus the cloud versus the software sort of things. So this is the example of one of the you know what a single DC implementation. This is a cross DC implementation. So uh, once you're going for the you know what creating any data center in your location. So it is very important to you understand that uh, your data center would be a single location or this is the cross DC implementation right. So if you have the uh, you know what medium size enterprise, then you have to go for you know what uh, the the cross risk implementation. The enterprise level companies are always going to the cross risk implementation. It means that more than one data center, okay, different different region as well. And if you have the small business, so that you can work on the uh, single DC implementation at the same time, right? So first of all, you need to understand the zone. So the the zone would be the locations which we are just talking about here. It is. And that you have to just uh, you know uh, gathering information of your this is which you are talking about uh, this 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 one we are just talking about uh, basically it's just is your physical infrastructure calculation of your benchmarking right benchmarking it means that what is the best hardware what is the best software what is the best applications currently working in your infrastructure and what is the costing so first of all you have to calculate your existing infrastructure physical infrastructures data centers locations so that we have to provide some applications information so what type of applications are working and what type of nodes you have provided and what are the configurations of this particular uh, applications are using it what is the databases sort of things and what what are the configurations of the database databases and what type of mysql and vm disk and different different sort of applications or different uh, services you are running in your data centers and what type of node number of nodes are using at the same time and then the configurations part then you have to just calculate the number of you know what different different sites. This is the site name is Cisco. We have implement uh, the things on the Cisco side as well. So that this is the this is the costing is all about. Uh, triple four point two five six. This is the hardware physical uh, costing of the site of Cisco, right? We have implemented. Okay. So then we have to go for some uh, benchmarking of the Azure as well. So this is the Azure uh, VM type, and then we have different different um, you know what. Uh, um, VMs available once you're going for the you know what uh, as your site and you have to just check that check it out There are different different number of servers different different flavors of the configurations are showing so you have to just uh, write down here and then you can just uh, 
write down the uh, number of you know what instances you required and uh, number of applications you required and what is the costing is all about so we have to just calculate the costing is is all about this is the triple four point five two five six is the cost existing existing costing of your data center and this is a three zero three zero nine three is the costings once we're going for the uh, azure sort of things okay and then we have to go for the same things we can do for ec2 uh, sort of things so this is the same type of you know what configuration the different different vm stacks is available so you can just write down the uh, you know what configurations of your servers whatever you require it for the application servers database servers and uh, this is your database server servers and then you can just go in uh, going for the costing sort of part right so i can say that this is first of all you have to just going for the benchmarking of your physical infrastructures what is the costing is all about and then wait a second what happened yes so uh, uh, this is a uh, wait a second i'm just going to uh, disable my wi-fi yes so are you able to guys able to see my screen yes yes okay yes okay. yes i am able wait. to see the screen yes sir wait a second yes it's okay okay it seems to be okay right now so uh, i i think you have understand the single dc implementation sort of things right so you have to just uh, first of all uh, going for the you know what uh, benchmarking of your physical hardware versus the cloud computing hardware and what is the costing is all about so you can you can easily understand that this is the costing you have to uh, uh, speak to the management that this is the costing we are in, uh, we are uh, you know what uh, uh, you know what physical infrastructure costing and this is our you know what azure costing and then this is your uh, uh, aws costing so if if you look into this uh, slide there's the there's a slight uh, you know what high costing of the azure and also the v uh, also the aws at the same time but it is you know it's, it's a scalability sort of thing so you can just increase the number of things into the same uh, environment but here it is you have to purchase as each and every physical hardware at the same time right and then we are building, and then we are going for the some ha high availability sort of things and uh, this disaster recovery sort of things right so this is a cross dc implementation space we are going for, for this so this is the site john one it's, it is a site one we can say that your india site or you can say your different site from us location of, of your different different sites you can just write it down zone two zone three whatever so we have already just if you just look at the third one is zone three we have only created the data uh, database arbiter just because of there's a high costing on the on the three sites same time so same things uh, we have applied which we applied on, on earlier on the single data centers so we have to just put up put your applications and different different your applications and then you can number of nodes requirement and there's the configuration sort of part and then you can just calculate the costing part right and uh, you have to just check it out the costing is all about the physical infrastructure same time right so this is 4067 on the Azure side, or if you're talking about, uh, we have going for, this is a uh, double four double two. This is the AWS, the AWS costing is all about. So the million dollar question is all about uh, where we have to implement our uh, data center. This is also a very important question so, over there because we have, you have to just speak to the management that yeah, this is, we can going for the uh, cloud computing, but where, how we can go for the AWS cloud computing okay so uh, this is the you know what the useful links i have just uh, copy pasted it here so first of all you have to go in here and then you have to you know what uh, check the latency is all about so i'm just going to you know what paste some here uh, it's like it. Okay, guys. So, are you able to see the screen? So, this is the let. This is the latency is all about. Second. So, we have to go. I think we can see the Excel sheet only. Okay, wait a second. Yes, yes. Only Excel sheet is looking there. Okay, wait a second. Nothing reflection in the Excel sheet. Yes, wait a second. There may be some. Yeah, mouse is 
like cursor is like uh, moving wait second there may be some issues on this wait second yeah guys are you able to see the screen this is my mm, yes yes mouse wheeler okay so uh, this is you know what the latency is all about so first of all uh, you have to going for the benchmarking the first step you have first of all you know what convince to the management that you have to go going for the cloud right this is your responsibility then uh, you have to going for the benchmarking you have to satisfy your management that this is the hardware cost this is the this is the our existing azure costing and this is our you know what aws costing and then we have to going for you know what cloud dot ping this is a site you can just check the latency of the particular location so where you need to you know what implement your data center so this is all about the latency is showing so uh, this you, i will just send you this uh, access sheet to you so that you can just again going for the, you know what uh, hello in locations uh, hello hi sir right uh, hello sir i have i have a query yes tell me yeah query related to whatever you have said right till now i mean so the yeah, whole excel sheet which you, whatever you try to understand us I means uh, just uh, missing some things I means i really can't uh, properly understand that what, what the things is like uh, I means you are talking about the data center aws data center which you have can you please clear that things okay okay wait a second so uh, first of all you know what the let that uh, you just need to check the latencies all about so uh, the different different latencies there uh, where we have to implement the data, data centers all about so you can just check with the how many latencies so uh, the closer of your location the latency would be good right suppose you are uh, you know what sitting in the india locations so indian locations uh, the latency would be good okay so you have to create your data center nearby the this is asia pacific mumbai locations this is the you know what there is very less latency you will find out and if you're going uh, you know what far away from this location so that you will find out more and more latency so this is the site website you can just check the latency and then you can decide where you need to implement your uh, uh, your data center location would be right so uh, this is the ping is going on so you can just check the uh, all all about the sort of things second yes yes so uh, if you just check uh, this this is the thing this is 109 milliseconds right so this is the asia pacific mumbai locations if you create your data center because i am sitting in uh, uh, india locations and if, if i'm going to open a data center the mumbai locations so we have we will got the very less latency of the, of uh, the locations right okay wait a second we were going again to the excel. yes so uh, my question is basically uh, this my question is basically uh, uh, what i'm trying to tell you is this uh, this is your single dis implementation of your one data center this is your you know what different different data centers more than one locations and then you have to you know what provide some you know what uh, your locations name over there then you need to provide what is the applications name what is the what type of you know what servers you are using it what type of databases you are using it what type of uh, ftp servers you are using or different different uh, name of this particular applications or servers or whatever a number of nodes which you are using it for the particular applications and then what type of configurations of your physical hardware and what is you know what uh, then you can just calculate the costing of your physical infrastructure there there it is same same sort of things this is like this is example sort of thing so you can just create your own data centers physical infrastructure costing so you, you can just assign to your management that this is the costing which is it has happened right now and if you're going for the cloud computing and then this is the costing we have to uh, going for it so this is a v, uh, azure vm type of uh, configurations and then you can just number of host and number of you know what costing is you can just calculate at the same time and also this is the edge aws the thing is all about so they the same things so you can just going for the all sort of things so it's called this a hardware benchmarking and what is the best hardware what is the best software of your company and what is the costing of this particular uh, things so you just calculate 
right so we are going to another one so how do you calculate the costing is costing part so there is that there is a different different you know what uh, uh, costing calculators is, 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 is available it into the aws or azure sites so you can just you know what going uh, same time to the different uh, which second i will show you little slow yeah this is the aws total cost of ownership uh, are you guys see the screen yeah now it's viewing yes okay. so this this is the, the, the aws total cost of ownership uh, calculator so you can just uh, write down your currency and uh, sort of things what type of currency you're using it and this is your on premises or your your, your collections and then you can just provide your locations which is locations you're just talking about and then uh, this is the servers you can just provide what type of servers you require you require right and this is the storage sort of things and you can just write down the storage things and then you can just calculate the total cost of aws right there's another uh, you know what the the aws reports uh, right right is slack so you can just create your account as here this is a free a start free trial and you can just calculate calculating the costing of the aws but the, the servers or your storage or whatever the databases you're just talking about so you can just create your account in in this and you can just you know what for casting the, the cost of your your uh, you know what aws so these this these this is the sort of things you can just you know what calculating the things and then you can just add a row and then provide what type of linux what different different flavors of your uh, 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 flavors of your you know what uh, AWS requirement and you can just provide the things over there for sort of things right and uh, then uh, we will just going for another one so uh, that the question is all about what type of servers is, uh, we have so I will show you that what type of servers we uh, we need to you know what going for it second So uh, the internet little slow from my end, I think so. Yeah, there it is. You, you will just find out the instances type. So uh, with different different instances for different different use cases, the, the scenario which you are using in your enterprise environment. Uh, so this is that this is the type of servers you can just going to purchase. Uh, yeah, this 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 one. So there's a general purpose sort of things, and this is a compute the high CPU utilization sort of uh, servers if you required, and this is a memory high memory utilization sort of uh, servers. This is the type of servers you will just find out in the costing part and if you just find out into the AWS console once you're going for the practical sort of things. And this is a storage optimized sort of servers. This is the type of the server so you can just uh, check that what type of servers you required and accelerated computing sort of support, uh, servers. So this is the type of servers you can just choose choose what type of servers you required. Right? We have another, uh, I will just show you some other things as well. Wait a second. So suppose you would like to understand that what is the comparison uh, of uh, the Azure uh, versus the AWS versus Google Cloud for the servers uh, pricing part. So there it is. I will show you things.
yeah this is the tool this is the right scale tool you can just try to check that what type of tools you required what type of you know what different different cloud uh, aws versus azure versus google so what type of you know what servers you required what type of comparison requirement you can just check it out from here so it's i think it's going to start so these are the some you know what basic fundamentals basic things you can just uh, going for before you going to implement the aws cloud computing in your envi environment Second, it's a little slow. Okay. Yeah, there it is for you. Uh, so this is the, the, the sizes of the cloud. If you look at this particular AWS, this is Azure, this is Google, and it's like it, it is coming. Yes, sorry uh, guys, are you able to see the screen? Now I am able to see the screen. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is the comparison between the four clouds, right? This is the AWS, this is Azure, this is Google Cloud, this is IBM Cloud, and the maximum CPU, what, how many maximum CPUs, the maximum memory, how many you can use it, the downtime calculations, uh, the SLAs, and the different different things you will just find out so you can just calculate the what which which is the best cloud and what is the different different regions available and what what are this, what type of security certifications they they have taken it okay so uh, you have a fair idea about it what type of uh, operating systems are are there into this particular suppose if we're talking about uh, the centos and this is cloud linux this is available in aws but it is not available in azure sort of things and it is not available into the google cloud so that that is all about my dear friends because uh, these 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 is all the all the sort of things you can just check it out and you can just you know what uh, uh, check and what type of services are available into different different region as well right so you can just uh, check what type of services and what type of things are available so uh, you have fair idea about the, what which cloud you have to, you can have to choose it Okay, so we move, we will move further. So uh, this is the uh, sheet is basically uh, I will share it again. Okay. Okay, so we will move to the particular slide. So uh, uh, today uh, the goals are would be uh, the value uh, propositions, proportion and the global infrastructures, key services and the security and compliances, architecture, pricing and support. So this this is the goals of any every enterprise company that what type of architecture, what type of support they will get it out and the, what is the security. Of the uh, of the data center, what is the compliance and the key services, and who who the person are you know what is going to be the part of this particular the salesperson uh, are indulged into the AWS cloud computing, the legal part, what type of security is all about, and the marketing part, how can we you know what uh, sell the AWS or Azure sort of things and business analysts sort of things and project managers 
AWS Academy students and other IT professions. So they are more interested into this AWS cloud environment, right? So uh, going to third one. Uh, there's a course module so we will just going to cover into this introduction of aws cloud so why why the aws is more uh, you know what number one as a light down to the market because it is a, you know what uh, it launched in 2006 and it is uh, you know what covers the 40 percent of the market stack uh, right now uh, into the market and uh, as, as we compare to the azure azure is you know what taking the 30 percent of the market capture and other uh, clouds are you know what 30 percent so the aws is number one and uh, just because of uh, uh, it is you know what uh, providing some different different big com brand names companies like uh, netflix is you know what using the aws cloud computing uh, in in the environment right so the very very big brands are you know you know what using the aws that's why the, uh, and it is a you know what old uh, cloud uh, it, which, which was launched in 2006 that that's why it is number one it's, and market stack is also 40 percent that is that is the only one reason that it is aws is number one and there is very less downtime for the past you know what 10 years very less things sort of things and uh, the more hundred numbers of features are available into the aws and azure so uh, as we as we have checked that the uh, you know what enterprise level companies are more uh, you know what going to into the aws sort of environment but uh, as we are talking about the medium size company and and the uh, you know what now the enterprise companies are you know what interested into the more in azure sort of things so if you have learned the AWS concept, uh, you know what the architecture part, the pricing part, the costing part, the uh, and the framework sort of things, and the securities part, and also the server uh, less architecture sort of things. So then you can just also work into the Azure uh, side as well. So this that that's important things we can just uh, you know what cover into this particular slide as well. So uh, the we are just talking about the AWS cloud computing. What is all about? How we use the cloud more effectively what is the use cases what is you know what benefits of the cloud okay then we're just talking about some core services of the uh, of the particular cloud and we have some we are just talking about some different different services as well then we are just talking about some architecture part of the cloud and then we uh, talking about some security part and then we're just talking about the pricing and support and sort of things so these are the you know what the key six part because if you implement it or if you're going to implement the AWS architecture, the AWS uh, environment in your in your site, if you implement it, then you you just take, uh, caring about some pricing part. What is the pricing? How can we reduce the pricing sort of things? And if you're going to implement, then you have to understand the architecture part, right? And as as the, as per the, your senior management is more concerned about the security part, right? And your engineers more you know what the uh, the, they were they would they would like to understand the core services what are the core services of the aws how can we effectively work into the aws environment so this is all about important uh, six scenarios which we just talking about into the entire class today okay so uh, uh, this is cloud computing uh, so th this is the, our first cloud cloud plans so in the previous in the previous times we have some you know what different different servers in the on premises architectures it's we are using and this is the corporate Corporation and network, they are using it in the applications, database storage, and their number of servers, and they have, they have lots of downtime, and these are the disaster recovery sort of things. And there is no, you know, business continuity plan is, is there. So we have just moved to the internet, all sort of things. And the AWS is taking care of all sort of AWS IT infrastructure part, you know what, IES, right? And uh, that the server storage and databases and uh, applications and all sort of things are managed, managed by the, you know what, uh, AWS and the, the the AWS uh, you have to just get the console and you have to just create as per your requirement of the company. Okay, just move further. Then how does it work? So AWS owns and maintains the network connected hardware and you provision and use what you need. So first first of all, everything is you know what maintained by the AWS uh, their own end and you have to you know what you know maintain the network connectivity hardware and you know what what you what you want you can just get it from the same time okay so yeah you, you have to create a plan for your high availability plan your cross list implementation sort of plans and uh, uh, you can just create your data, data, data center recovery sort of things and business continuity plan you can just create it so that that sort of things you just keep going for your mind that if we have one side we have if we have different side we have different zones available we have to go for some different different uh, databases and application sort of things so you have to just make a plan of action sort of things and then the cloud computing and models. So we just talking about uh, into this is a, a infrastructure as a service because in IES basically you have to work on every department like 
networking you need to create you have to create some ec2 instances serverless architectures you need to, need to create it and then you have to you know create some security part you have to create some you know database part so different different tasks you have to create it uh, here on the aws aws part as a it's like as a service platform as a service and the software as a service suppose i office is xy sort of things there's a software service examples and there is no there is nothing need to do it over there so you have to just create some you know what provide some licensing to the a different different even e3 sort of licensing or office specific for environment and then a rest of things will be done by the microsoft team as well at the same time and platform as a service suppose you require some uh, you know what visuals visual and visual studio sort of things and they will provide you uh, the, uh, the the remote system of your uh, console and then you can just uh, working on the visual studio and then save your data and and then the data will be saved to their environment so there's a platform as a service example sort of things Okay, so uh, the uh, question is about the uh, cloud deployment model. So uh, the private uh, cloud and the hybrid cloud, and the, this is the cloud which we are talking about. So most of the times we are just going talking about the hybrid cloud, because hybrid cloud we are just talking about each and every functionality of your data centers, your uh, disaster recovery sort of things, different different regions you have to create it because all of the companies are you know what and going for globalization sort of things. More than one data center, more than one locations uh, is, is available. All the all the data centers right so you have to going for the uh, hybrid environments so hybrid environment is basically is about the public cloud plus private cloud it's your hybrid cloud environment and the private cloud basically your it's all for your uh, uh, you know what internal web uh, internal companies requirement sort of things suppose you are you have to just create your own uh, um, yeah, finance department your hr finance hr department sort of application so you can just create your private cloud deployment sort of things but uh, we are just talking about into this uh, hybrid cloud environment because a hybrid cloud environment basically suppose uh, um, uh, Amazon is an online company and you have to just sell your product to the outside of the world so that you have to create some your uh, some some of some of your part of the applications will be working the inside some of the uh, part of the applications will be working your public cloud as well same time. So uh, the trade capital expense uh, expense for variable expenses so the data center investment based upon forecast. So what type of forecasting you're doing it there's a capacity management sort of things you need to uh, create, create it but here in the cloud environment pay only for the amount you consume so the, your video capacity management sort of things you need to not not doing into this aws environment you are you have everything is you know what uh, uh, you have to just pay what you get only so benefit from massive economics of skills uh, because of the aggregate using of all customers aws can achieve higher economics of sale and past savings on the customers so that you know what if you go for the universe uh, saving your bills saving your amounts number of features you will get it out so this is the you know what very big benefit for the you know what as per your uh, financial sort of things in you know, any company so uh, uh stop guessing capacity so because in the in the earlier times you are just guessing the capacity management the capacity manager is you know what guessing the capacity after five years where my company stand after 10 years where my company stand what type of it infrastructure i require it and how do i manage it how how can i spend over the like over the licensing part of this you know what different different servers flavors but uh, once we are going into this uh, aws environment uh, scaling on the demand because if you you have different different options available into the into the aws environment reserve capacity on demand capacity and you can just take uh, you can just uh, you know what bonding for the three years one years and if you work on the server on the one one hour or two hours you can just stop the servers your pricing will be no pricing at the same time so this is you know what there is no cap you know what guessing sort of things if you if you are using the you know what hardware you have to pay for it if you're not using it then you have to not no pay for it so this is the beauty about this particular aws and also the cloud computing as well in this speed and agility the same time you you know what uh, in, the, in the previous time order all times we, uh, we have to you know what uh, uh, going for the vendor management sort of things we have to go in for the vendor and ask the ask the quotation sort of things and we have, we have to shortlist the quotations and we are waiting for the vendors to come and you know what configure installations or sort of hardware but right now uh, in the aws and the cloud computing concepts we don't have to wait for anyone you have everything is available you have to just going for going to launch a uh, launch applications launch a servers launch a database launch a networking in a single instance a single minutes you can say that and the stop ascending money uh, by running and maintaining data centers so you know what we, we have different different hardware landscapes utilities pay the whole different applications are working and uh, 
once we're going for you know what aws and azure and google cloud sort of things and we have different business and business different different customers so you know what the as about investment side it is, it is very less and we have you know what different different data centers available in a different different regions so there's you know what the disaster recovery sort of things is very important and so uh, go global in minutes suppose you are create your uh, you know what creating uh, your own startup company and you have to you know what selling your product to the uh, to the india right now and if you're going to go for the global side global sort of thing so you have to just create uh, your you know what this serverless architecture uh, in uh, servers into this particular aws and then you can just you know what sell your product to the all over the world in globe go global in a minute so you know what this is all about the beauty about this particular aws that you can just uh, you know what the flexibility of the reliability and security of as prospects yeah, each and everything you will just find out you have to understand that what you need to going to use it then the aws security uh, the, because if the senior management and everyone is more concerned about the what type of security we will get in the aws environment keep your data safe and uh, meet compliance requirement does it meet the compliance requirement does it my save my money scale quickly and this sort of things you're just talking about into the security part so these are the you know what uh, what is the aws cloud so we, we have to go go for different different services this, this compute part storage part database part and migration part and different different services are available into the aws so we have to keep in mind that what type of service we are using it what is the pricing of this particular services and what how can we use effectively this particular services the cost effective solutions we can go for it so we are just talking about some core services all about. So choose your locations. So as I already suggest you that first of all you have to decide what type of data centers you require, where the data center you require it, what is the location of the data centers, where is the where is the very less latency you will just find out, where you have to you know what going going to implement your data center, where is your backup data center? Suppose your close to implement is where your where is your data center is all about. So you have to understand all sort of things. Then you have to uh, configure your security as well. Then what type of security I can configure into this particular uh, same time. Then uh, launch your infrastructures as per your requirement, as per your company requirement. What is uh, where, where we have to invert, uh, launch our infrastructure same time and store your data. And we, where we have to store your data, where is our data, database we have to create. So we have a different different storage, storage uh, services available into this AWS uh, console. So we will uh, talk to you later on. So this 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 is the only uh, the four things you need to uh, goals you have to achieve at the same time and the first question of your answer is basically choose your location so at the AWS you know AWS as your uh, sort of cloud computing uh, you have to find out number of regions available right so this is the AWS regions you just find out where your data centers is all about the availability zones you just find out and the planet uh, planet regions this is the planet regions for some time later this data center will be open here right. So you have to understand, uh, you have to just clarify that where, where is your data centers we need to set up. Then the availability zones, because uh, if, if you're just talking about uh, into the previous slide that this is the US location and the US locations, there are multiple data centers available. So we can say that this is the, uh, you know what, availability zones are available. Data center one, two uh, data centers, one uh, B, one A and one C. So there, there are the three different, different data centers in one location. So you can just have to, you know what, this is called the availability zones. So you have to, you know what, uh, going for what type of availability zones. Suppose India have, uh, uh, in India have uh, two locations, uh, Delhi and you know what, Mumbai and different Chennai locations. So where the data center you need to set up it out, right? So first you have to check it out where the availability zones are available in the in India side or different different locations. Then you, then you have to uh, create your, uh, your primary site, where is your primary site and where is your secondary site. And the edge locations, the edge locations would be what type of different different locations. This is your Europe locations. This is your US locations, and this is your Asia Pacific regions. You know what edge locations we are talking about. So it is requirement that uh, once once you once you are going for your sending a packet to the different different edge locations. So this is also important prospects we are just talking about later on. Uh, three ways to interact with the AWS. So uh, you can just, you know what, open the AWS management console via web console. You can, uh, you know what, uh, open uh, from the CLI as well. And the third thing is open through the software development kits, SDK, different different things available. So we're just talking about later on. This is the AWS uh, kit. So you can just using the Python, PHP, .NET, Ruby, 
and go Node.js and C++ and Java. So these things you can just using it same time. And uh, uh, we're just talking about the Amazon virtual private cloud. So this is the networking part of this particular AWS. So uh, this is your VPC part. Your first of all, you create your VPC virtual private cloud. This is look like your your networking uh, network interface card of your uh, system. And then and then uh, this is virtually cre created. And then uh, you have you know what these instances. You have to just public subnet and then you map your net v VPC to your different different. Uh, EC2 instances. Once we're going for the practical, then we just look at very, very easy to configure, very easy to understand over there. So, okay. And then the security groups we just talking about uh, uh, which traffic we have to allow, which traffic we need to deny. So th this is all. This is sort of things. So, and you can just you know what the source and this is the protocols and this is the uh, port range, which protocols you have to. Uh, we, you have to you know what. Uh, Allow which which to deny this sort of things you have you have to go for it. So only allow rules and no deny rules, default rules. You can just uh, going for to you know allow the traffic which traffic you have to deny the traffic. These sort of things you can uh, do at the same same time. And then the security groups examples. So these are examples you just uh, showing it because which type of inbound traffic which is your inbound traffic and which is your outbound traffic which we are, and which protocols you need to allow the traffic which protocols you have to deny the traffic. And what is the protocol? What is the protocols of, of the things? And what type of servers you have to implement? And which which type of it, uh, you have to connectivity? Do the thing. If you are working on the, uh, you know what, uh, uh, access list sort of things, then this is the same thing. Uh, things happen. So the the summary is basically the Amazon VPC is a globally isolated uh, selection of the AWS region in which uh, you can launch AWS resources in the virtual network defined by you. And security groups act as a virtual firewall at the instance level to control inbound and outbound traffic. So we can say that the uh, the, the security groups are basically your your software uh, firewall. We can say that where you can just allow the traffic or you have to just deny the traffic same time. Okay. And VPC is basically globally it is a logically isolated section of AWS region, and then you can map the particular VPC to a different different uh, uh, EC2 instances, and then it it will be working as together. Now, and what is Amazon EC2? EC2 is basically uh, uh, we can say that the different number of servers, what type of servers are required. So this application server, web servers, game servers, mail servers, same type of we have to create the EC2 instances in the AWS environment, and then you can just uh, configure the application, configure your web deployment sort of things, and then you can work into the EC2 environment. Okay, so this is your on-premises servers and into the Amazon EC2 instances. You have just this is type of servers you can just and you can just mapping to the EC2 uh, VPC to particular instances and then provide a subnet and then you have to going for your load balancer and then you have to provide a public IP address and then the traffic goes to outside. So this this sort of scenarios we will work later on. So uh, benefits of Amazon EC2 is basically electricity, uh, okay, and it's control, the flexibility. We can just you know what use at any time, number of times, and uh, we can increase number of times. Integrated, integrated, reliable, uh, secure, expensive, and easy. And this is a 99% availability. So you can use use you can use EC2 instances into the AWS environment console. And this is the what is your use cases. So suppose uh, you know what this, this instance type is all about. This is general purpose. This is the type of the servers. Okay, and use is the broad because if you are using in, 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 in any application sort of things a little, little, little bit of your application sort of things you can use it this this particular general purpose sort of things and then if you're talking about the compute optimized, this is a C5 and C4 type of the instances and then uh, Use cases the high performance if you have the quite high performance of the servers, then you can go for the C5 C4 and C5 as uh, type of servers and if you require some high memory utilization sort of servers then i r5 r4 this is the type of servers you can use it and academic computing this is for machine learning sort of things artificial intelligence sort of things then you have to choose this particular server type and if you have a storage optimized sort of servers required then you have to go for h1 i y3 and d2 servers and distributed file systems so this is your use cases what type of servers you can use it and what are the case what are the cases is all about so you can have to choose whatever your company requirement is all about so each two instances types are optimized for different use cases right and uh, you uh, workloads and come in multiple sizes this allows you to optically scale resources to your workload requirements aws utilize intel xeon processors right 
and uh, this is a different different input output and CPU, CPU technologies are using it and different different you know what idle instances and sort of things you will just check it out into this okay so EC2 instances are powered by the Intel technologies right the all the Intel uh, processors are you know what in, in built with the AWS uh, EC2 instances and you have a different different type of uh, servers available into the AWS environment you can just choose it uh, whatever the company requirement and then uh, configure the things as per the as per the requirement right the compute optimized instances are different different you know what uh, servers available this is a processor sort of things and based on the intel xeon scalable and 25 gigabit network bandwidth utilization and support for um, intel and this is used for netflix and grill so uh, what type of servers requirement what type of uh, company requirement you have to analyze as per your company requirement and then you can choose the servers what type of servers you require and then uh, you have to configure the, uh, the things on the particular server. Uh, the next generations are uh, general purpose instances, so you can just use this particular instances for general purpose use case, right? Uh, the, the, these have uh, some different different you know what uh, type of CPU uh, usage case, and these are different different RAMs, and uh, you can just you know what first to one memory and see virtual CPU ratios is all about. And how much you, uh, you need? Uh, you, do you need uh, different different? You know what the server models is all about. What this is virtual CPU is all about. What how many uh, CPU requirement of the particular servers and how many how much RAMs you required and what type of storage requirement. So this is this this thing is is available on the AWS console. Once you're working on the AWS console, you, the, everything is you know what uh, in front of you. You have to choose what type of servers you require and what is the pricing, what is the costing of the particular server for in, input or the output of the data and you and the other other server same time so this is your platform so you have to just choose ami ami is basically amazon machine images so the operating systems is in what they will provide you aws is providing at the same time so you can use use them right so it is already licensed uh, operating systems so you can just find out and you can use it so what's your storage requirement? So you can just uh, instance block storage for instance is protected to up the applications, different drive types, scale up and down in, in minutes, pay for only what you provision, snapshot functionality uh, encryption available. So this is the you know what if you are going for the database uh, servers, right? And then you then if you if you are going you guys are working on the data uh, storage sort of things, and then they, they understand these things are very uh, carefully that encrypted available or not encrypted of, of your data snapshot functionality is available or not uh, not available in, in your database pay for only what you provision scale up or down into the minutes different drive types is available so what type of will is available and what is general purpose ssd uh, is using it and what is the hard std and ssd the other difference the ssd has a different input output because they died, uh, you know what speed is very high on the ssd side so the different different input output speed they died speed so that's why using the solid state drives and hard hard disk drives and this is a throughput optimized and code uh, hard disk this is sort of things so you can just you know different different options are available once you're going for aws storage uh, things into the aws environment so uh, containers versus virtual machines so this is your you know what uh, server sort of thing then the, the both scenarios and there's a host operating systems uh, uh, running and the hypervisor is also running same time and this is the guest operating systems and then the different different applications you just creating sort of things and the containers the operating system and the docker engine is available and then this is the applications of different different applications so this is the example of you know containers so how the containers are working into the aws environment and the virtual machines in environment same time so what is difference between two things and uh, how they are working together so what's your storage use case so this is the use case a different different uh, you know what uh, use cases into this aws amazon abs volumes we are just creating and uh, the precision block storage for ec2 instances amazon s3 this is called bucket and different different digitally uh, distributed web enabled object storage sort of thing glacier it's a long-term records of your storage of data efs variable network attached file storage sort of things and aws storage gateway aws extension of your on-premises storage right and this is efficient data migration options cloud data migration servers so these these are the type of storage uh, use cases you will find out into the aws and you have to decide that what type of uh, you know what use case you can use it for your company suppose your company is talking about we have to save your data for the long time so you have to go for the glacier sort of things right 
uh, suppose your your company is using the FTP server, file file transfer protocol, FTP FTP server. You know what share share folder as well. So you have to go for the Amazon S3 bucket sort of things. Okay, and you you, have, you just create some uh, policies on the S3 bucket, and then it is auto automatically moved your data into the glacier, which are not used in the past six past six three years, three months, four months, six months. So you can create the policies whatever you like it, right? And this is Amazon ABS. So you can just you know what attach to your uh, attach to your EC2 instance at the same time and uh, different different sizes available, right? Uh, then uh, what is Amazon S3? I uh, already discussed about it because data is stored as an object within buckets and there is 99% available durable. The maximum size of this bucket is, is 5 TB and granular access to the bucket and object at the same time is over there. And Amazon S3 is common use scenarios of backup and storage, application hosting, media hosting, and software del delivery. So if you are going for this sort, this sort of you know, what use cases, you have to go for S3 bucket at the same time. So just uh, more, not just a storage bucket. You can just uh, uh, request a page versioning, different different versioning available. Suppose you have saved your data today, and the same file, you know what saving uh, tomorrow. There is some modifications you have done it. So there's a version one, but then version two is available. So version two is, is available same time. A hosting a static website. You can just uh, hosting your website and your database of your your logs or your uh, of, you know what the logs are available into the S3 bucket same time. Object lifecycle management, so you can just create your object and lifecycle management. You can just do it, whatever you feel it. So, what is Amazon Glacier? So I already discussed about the low cost data archiving and long term backup uh, sort of things, and expedited standard and bulk table options, and can configure lifecycle achieving of Amazon S3 uh, content to Amazon Glacier. Okay. So Amazon Glacier is basically Amazon S3 on premises servers and EC2 instances, and you have to just you know create some policies S3 bucket to Glacier, and then you know what data is in what uh, uh, the, uh, more than five terabytes of data you can just save into the Glacier same time. This archiving features available into the AWS and at very less cost. So Amazon Glacier use cases media asset workflows, healthcare informations archiving, regulatory and compliance as archiving, scientific. Data storage, digital dimensions, and magnetic tape replacement things are available. So these are the data sort of things, and the data should be you know what not required uh, exist uh, you know what uh, one and two years, three years, six years. So you can just move your data to the archiving sort of information to the glacier, and it's very at very very less cost. Amazon Glacier, what uh, lock policy? You can just uh, you know what create a lock policy into this uh, uh, glacier. So once we're going for the practical things, we will just check it out. What are the lock policies all about? So the, a little bit of the conceptual and the logical things you need to understand here: the deploy and content force compliance, compliance controls uh, on individual Amazon Glacier wards. What becomes immutable once locked, right? So module summary so basically is VPC. First of all, we create the VPC, and then you know what, uh, we have one availability zone, the second availability zone. This is the one region is all about one location, right? This is India location or whatever the location would be, and then you have to create VPC, and you have to create some different different you know what availability zone. One data center, this one, one a second data center, data center is over there, and you have to create some VPS volumes and security groups map with this, and then then. You have to create a public subnet over there and then map to different different things. So uh, this is the practical things we just uh, going later on and then we have to create some secondary data centers and then uh, you have to create some bucket over there and then the create a policy on the S3 bucket and then the data of archiving of your data not used within six months or one year the data has already moved to the glacier and then you can create a policy on the glacier side as well. If your data is not used within five years, then the data should be removed. So there is very less, you know, what the cost cutting and the cost saving sort of things you can just deploy over here. So hosting a static website, I will just uh, giving some examples, the scenarios. I want to create a highly available static website. So what I need technology is used for Amazon S3. Example, uh, hosting a static website, you will create S3 bucket, deploy your website, and make your site publicly available same times. So my public website is basically your your you know what database or your your uh, you know what uh, uh, the logs of the particular uh, uh, servers everything you just maintained from this uh, the bucket same time right. So uh, there are some different different uh, also uh, services available into the AWS right right. So this is elastic load balancing, auto scaling, Amazon CloudWatch, as Amazon Route 53, 
databases, Lambda, CloudFront, LightShell. So these are the features of the AWS. So there are, there are different different features for different different services. What type of services we can use it? How many costing is all about? What are the cost of the particular service? How can we use, use effectively? So this 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 things is you know what into the AWS. We it, because it is it has more than 100 services available. So you have to you know what take care of what type of things you requirement and what is the costing is all about. You need to uh, going for as per your company expectations and what type of requirement and the you have to going for it and then you have to. Uh, you know what configure the things as per your requirement sort of things so i will just give provide you some example like why scaling matters right scaling matters mean that it, it means that uh, uh, this overestimated uh, server load because if you, you have you know what required uh, you know what five servers and you have just provided some 10 to 20 servers at the same times and the over over estimated servers load is providing it here an underestimated load server. So this is the, the requirement of 10 servers and you just provide for five servers same times and when the load is very high and you know what uh, everything is goes goes waste. Yeah, if your site is crashed same time, right? So the scaling is is, is uh, every time matters for you, my dear. So over estimations and under underestimation is you know what uh, you have to don't to worry about in the AWS environments. So you have to scale out uh, for spikes scale of during the off peak and the place and healthy instances and pay only for what you use so you in this in this you know what AWS environment you have to just uh, uh, you know what getting auto scaling uh, there's a features available so you have to enable the auto scaling features and then you to you know you have to just provide some five to six instances same times if your specs is very high the load is very high it automatically automatically creates the uh, ec2 instances same uh, same time for you the, the tools for auto scaling basically this is the elastic load balancer you're using and then the five uh, uh, five servers you are you, you are just creating and the uh, this if the five servers are in the same cluster one auto scaling group and if the load is very high then the automatically six or six seven eight servers are all, all automatically automatically created and your application works smooth the same times uh, this is an example it's all about the ELB features automatically distributes traffic across the multiple targets. The elastic load balancer is basically highly available. Health checks is going on same times and the SSL and TLS termination and operational monitoring same things. So this is the elastic load balancer is basically, uh, you know what, this is two type of, uh, you know what, elastic load balancer is, you know what, uh, uh, yeah, providing that uh, your, your traffic in the round robin method sort of things and then uh, what type of traffic you requirement suppose uh, in the AWS environment, there are the two types of elastic load balancers. Basically, uh, this classic load balancer is the application load balancer. The classic load balancer is basically uh, if you have, you know, what uh, different different servers like web server, FTP server, media servers, different servers, and it is if you configure the classic load balancers, then it will uh, you know, providing the round robin method and providing the load on all the servers same time. And if you have the web servers available, then it, you have to configure for your application uh, load balancer so that what type of request the http or https request ht or 443 type of request or if uh, if your images um, of your websites so it will send to the um, uh, the web server which have the images are saving and if your uh, web server are the query you know what resolver so it will sending the query resolver uh, server same time so elastic load balancer you know what we have to create into the aws environment so it is also important to understand that the electric load balancer is in the inside and the outside what type of electric load balancer we have to configure it so we will just uh, talking about later on the slides once we're going to the practical things so application load balancer use cases that i already discussed in uh, when, uh, right now because if you are the application load balancer what type of what type of uh, you know what query is coming from the outside right so uh, if you if you just talking about the application load balancer, then you have to application one, application two, application three. Suppose this is the, your images image server, this is your MS your, your query server. If, suppose it's your database server, so it will automatically application application server filter the filter the request and then it will send to the different different servers at the same time, right? So there is no load over the server same uh, on the same time. Amazon EC2 auto scaling is uh, I, I already discussed about. Uh, out it so the auto scaling load balancer and uh, this this sort of things you know we're working together and there is you know what providing the high availability uh, there is no disaster recovery sort of things here to create same sort of setup to the different location as well so there's a no disaster recovery and uh, business continuity services are working together same times so all things are you know we're working at the same uh, together 
then we used to move to the CloudWatch. CloudWatch is basically it is used for you know monitoring the things, monitor AWS resources, applications running, whatever applications running, standard metrics and custom metrics, send notifications automatically, max changes based on the rules what you define it. So this is more about more more into practical, but but you need to understand he, over here is what is the what is the logic behind it? Why why we are going to use this particular CloudWatch? What things I will get it into the you know what uh, once I going for the AWS console? What type of things I will get it? So the logic, the concept is need to be understood over here. So how CloudWatch works? Because if you configure the CloudWatch, the you know what monitoring uh, sort of tools and they have the CPU relation. What is the CPU, CPU relation of your EC2 instances? Uh, and it is take the uh, failed status and it is page view count and those sort of things it is uh, checking out. This is a CloudWatch alarm. You can just create alarm and SNS notification. It will automatically send to your email and your SMS will be coming. At the same time, so your instances are filled. Your CPU relation is very high. Them is them is very high. Uh, uh, so that sort that sort of thing is coming to the picture. And uh, the cloud watch benefits uh, access all your metrics from the single platform visi uh, visibility across uh, your applications and factor and services. Reduce mean time to resolutions mat MTR and improve the total cost of ownership. Drive insights to optimize applications and operational resources. The cloud watch, cloud watch basically is providing you know the alarm sort of thing so you can just notification same time so so that you can understand wh where the time my resources are very high uh, utilization of CPU and RAM or whatever it would be. And uh, uh, then we are talking about some uh, database part. So uh, AWS have different different database uh, uh, things are available. So in the database part, it's very easy to set up, manage, and maintain. If you if you guys are not maintain too much database in your previous experience, so that uh, very in this AWS environment, it's very easy to understand, very easy to set up, and very easy to manage sort of things. And push buttons, high labels, and focus on performances and uh, and eliminate and undifferentiated heavy lifting is as well so what type of uh, you know what uh, different different types of you know what databases amazon rds amazon aura different amazon dynamo db that shift amazon elastic assay napju and aws database migration service so different different uh, aws services available for databases so you need to choose what type of services you require for the database suppose you require some dynamo db sort of things so no sql uh, things you can go for it. Suppose you require some in what relation database, so you can go for RD, RDS. So most of the cases, uh, the companies are you prefer the Amazon RDS, but uh, as per the requirement of the company, what type of things you going for it? It is matter for your company. So what is Amazon relation database is all about? So different different in what relation databases. So Amazon Aura, PostgreSQL, SQL, MySQL, Oracle, MySQL, MariaDB. So this is the Amazon RDS in just available. So easy to administrate, highly available, available, switch durable, faster, secure, and expensive. So this is the things we will find out here. And uh, this is the, some features of Amazon Aura. What type of things are going, and going for it? What type of servers? What type of you know load latency? Read the applications you just find out. The continuous backup to Amazon S3. So this is the features of Amazon Aura you will find out here. And uh, what is the Amazon Dynamo DB? So fully managed uh, Dynamo DB, full latency queries. Finding access controls and regional and global uh, options. So this is the you know, what a flexible approach of your database. Wow, how do you manage the things and very less latency same times if your QR is coming from the public and um, uh, public domain to your internal domain and what type of latency you just find out. So it is very easy to manage, very easy to handle things and you will just find out different different regions and different different things available. And uh, Amazon DynamoDB use use cases. So if you if you're going for them, good gaming uh, sort of things, AD tech, mobile backends, microservices, data store, and Internet of Things. So you can just set up the DynamoDB like stretch for you. Where we need need to use the Amazon at Neptune. So fully managed graph database services for the link applications with highly connected databases. So if you're just going for you know, artificial intelligence sort of things, so you have to find out the number of data, the huge data uh, in uh, in your in your in the directory so you can just go for the amazon neptune so that social networking sort of things suppose your facebook is also using the neptune sort of things and um, amazon engines fraud detections knowledge graphics and life sciences so this is the you know what the huge database of this particular things and you can just find out the amazon neptune is the right choice for you so that shift uh, use cases accelerate your analytics workloads unified warehouse and data lake and modernize your on-premises data 
warehouse. So you can use this, this sort of things. And this is the uh, high availability uh, serv services with the uh, native high availability services with configurable HA. So this, this, these things we can see Amazon AC2, EPS, RDS, we have to you know what configure, we need to configure the high availability. Suppose why, where we need to create this, you know what, uh, one location and the second locations, one data center, one availability zone to different availability zone. And this is the availability zone with the edit. This, these things are already, you know, a native availability zone. This is already, you know, what uh, highly available at the same time. So you can just need to configure uh, the locations where, where you need to be set up. So example, high availability through ELB, suppose you can create the elastic load balance and then the web servers, this is availability zones created one locations, one zone, and this is the one physical location and one availability zone, this is the second availability zone, and then you have to just create the web servers, then you need to, what you need to do is database server, database server, you have to just replicate the database to each other, each other. Suppose this that availability zone is filled, then you just find out all sort of things here, and database service also you just find out here. So this is the high availability of your Elastic load balance through the load balance, so you can just do it. And the web application host, if you're talking about the lab, web application host, suppose this is a user is, is going to use the applications, and then the Amazon Cloud Front, and this is the traffic going to the load balancer, and then the same scenario which we're talking about availability zone A, availability zone 2, and this is your web servers, and it is sending the traffic to the secondary availability um, at load balancer, and then it is in what uh, the database is in what sending to each. At the same time, though uh, this is the you know what the AWS shared responsibility. So this, uh, the, the you know what first of all you need to you know what AWS global infrastructure. So you have to create the availability zones. It means to what type of data center, which are the location of the data centers, the regions, the country, country name, which country you have to create some data centers and the, with the edge locations if you require the edge locations you have to configure it and then the compute storage database and network you have to set up as per the requirement of the company and then and this is a foundation of your service and the customer's requirement the customer data and the platform applications identify access management these sort of things you need to be configured as well for the customer point of view this is your aws point of view so these things you just find out here you have to configure as per the requirement but this is the customer requirement you need to be uh, set up the operating system as per the, comp the customer requirement after you have to configure the networking and the firewall configuration as per the customer requirement what what type of traffic need to allow what traffic need to be disallow deny or uh, identity and access management you have to configure the iem sort of things which which uh, the sources have the permissions to access the, the data database the application server web server sort of things so you have to just manage as per your requirement of the customers Cloud in the uh, security in the cloud. So this is also important concern of, over the customers because customers require the, what to store, which AWS services, in which locations, in what contained format structure, and who access the same things. So that that is also important uh, scenario for the you know what uh, the, the customers point to you what type of security you are providing there, and uh, who is responsible for what. So this is the operations tasks, the uh, guest operating systems patching, database patching, firewall configurations, disaster recovery user data, this is operation sort of things, and this is an unmanaged service, and this is a managed service, RDS, S3, and DynamoDB. It is automatically, automatically available, so you need to configure it as the requirement, okay? And it's unmanaged because you have to create your EC2 instances, what type of AMI you have to use it, what type of storage you want to create it, what type of networking you need to create it, what type of, uh, you know, what traffic allow, what type of traffic deny, what type of things you need to go for it. So that is, you know, what everything is very important over there. The Amazon EB is also, you know, what what type of volumes you need to create, uh, store into the EC2 instances like SSD, solid state drive, or HDD sort of things. What so this is depend on the what type of things you need to be configured uh, of your EC2 instances or, or or you know what servers. So we just talking about some pricing part as well. So this is the pay as you go. What type of services you're using it? You have to pay for it same time. Save when you reserve if you're reserving the things because it's, it is you know what three years or one year you know what agreements with the AWS you have to reserve your instances suppose you you, you purchase uh, the 10 servers uh, 10 servers right now and you can use it within your three years at any time so there, there's a very less pricing same time you have to got some discount from the AWS pay less by using more if you are if you are you know what uh, using more and more services right you have to pay very less things very less prices so this is you know what sort of thing because if you're using the lots of you know services of the aws you will get lots of discounts on different different services 
right so only pay for you because in the on premises and collation because in the in the previous uh, all times because the you know what what day by day uh, as per your company grows you know what you have to pay uh, more than more uh, into the hardware infrastructure of the company of your it and if you are just going for the aws environment you have to starting with the less and then you have to go as per your company requirement high and then you have to go some you know what uh, uh, you know mod modifications of your resources modification of your things and then you have to these you, uh, you know what less the price at same time save when you reserve uh, reserved instances I already discussed about it because if you have you know what this is on demand but if you're going for the same time i require 10 servers they will charge you the same time the 10 servers costing same time and if you are using you know what these are the things uh, i required the 10 servers, 10 servers right now but i'm using it in three servers so for the three years go for the discount sort of thing so you will get 75 percent of the equivalent on demand capacity of discount sort of things upfront cost use more uh, palace so if you are using more services of uh, aws you have to pay uh, less things because discount sort of things is coming to the picture and the pricing concept is compute uh, charge per hour per second right and very varies by instance right so what type of instances you can choose it as per your instances what type of uh, charge you have to just calculate before you're going to going for uh, you know what launch instance so that this that is why i, I always always prefer that once you're going for any technology first of all going the you know what uh, the pricing part very important for you so what is the pricing part what what type of things you will be you have to create and what type of you know what charge is coming after that okay and the storage part charge typically per gb so what type of uh, how many storage you uh, you're using it then you pay for it and the data transfer outbound is aggregated as and charge in bond as no charge with some expect expectations and charge typically per gb okay so data transfer whatever the transfer input and outbound inbound traffic outbound traffic the charging there storage charges there and full charges there so you have to just uh, before uh, you know what implement of uh, uh, this uh, you know what is ec2 instances and uh, your database rds sort of things so you have to calculate what type of you know what uh, charges you have to pay for it so closer look ec2 instances abs and s3 you are just going so closer look this is on demand reserved instances spot instances and dedicated dedicated hosts so we have you know what Per pay by per hour seconds, okay. Discount, uh, discount for one to three years commitments and spare AWS capacity 90% discount on physical servers dedicated to you. So, this is the use cases, right? Short term unpredictable workloads on demand sort of things, applications with steady state usage, applications with flexible start and end times. So, it, it is depend on your organizations, it depends on the, the cloud administrator architect that what type of uh, things we just calculate. He will go for it because if you're going for the reserved instances, so you have to, you know, what uh, I mean, for the one to three years or any instances, right? If you're working, uh, if you if company requirement or applications sort of things, then you can go for the one to three years. And if you require some on demand, so you have to pay for one uh, hour basis sort of things. And if you require some on the spot things, then 90% discount on the same and dedicated sources are available at the same time. So it is depend on. Uh, you know what uh, scenarios of the companies what type of things is available what type of things you need to create what type of pricing requirement how can you how can you make the cost cutting sort of things so that is that is the that is the case in the studies all about so uh, amazon ec2 pricing factors so uh, server then time instance type pricing model number of instances load balancing detailed monitoring multiple elastic ip addresses os and software so these are the factors which is you know what uh, you know what providing the pricing of any instances suppose you create ac2 instances and then you the, the pricing is started same time instances type what type of instances you choose it what are the pricing model of this particular number of instances you have choose it the load balancing sort of things you have go for it so these are the you know what the the, the fundamentals of what are the, the pricing are increases day by day if you, you have to not not work on the same lot of things so Amazon EBS pricing. So this is the uh, you know what the volumes of the your your you know EC2 instances. The volumes charged by GB provision per month, right? Varies by volume type and the snaps. If you create a snapshot of your volume, suppose you have created EC2 instances and then you have just going going to take a snapshot, right? Then you have to just charge by space consumed by the Amazon S3 charge for charge for volume copied across regions, right? So this is the uh, you know what pricing part of the snapshot. And suppose you are just going to transfer the data, inbound data transfer is free. So inbound, inbound, inbound traffic 
is free and that outbound data transfer charge are tiered so suppose you if you are you know what uh, transferring your data one uh, one region to another region one uh, server to another server it's free of cost but if you're going to out, outbound outside then you have to provide some money as well amazon s3 pricing some amount of stores used the which regions you are going to uh, create your s3 bucket and the which class of your in work glacier and number of type of request get put and copy i think 1000 or uh, 1 lakh requests are free or what sort of thing and free tier we will check to uh, later on and amount of data transferred out of the region so this is the pricing sort of things in the s3 bucket aws service with no additional charge the, so these are the vpc elastic band stick aws cloud formations iem auto scaling so these are no charges for the services right so you can use it as per your requirement so aws free tier so we have you know what uh, you just you just create your free tier of aws and then uh, there is the there is some uh, uh, to to available into the aws and then you can just start your building your aws same time so it's a free tier for one year you can use it any services okay and uh, you just make sure that what type of pricing is in a plus free tier it is very important to understand so AWS support plans, we have uh, into this four plans, basic plan, develop plans, business plan, and enterprise for the other four plans are available under support plan. The customer service, customer support forms, health checks, recommendation, white papers. This is the basic plan. You can choose it. And this is your developer plans, best practices, guidance, a client side diagnostic tools, building blocks, all sort of things. So you can just choose what type of plans you the requirement as your company suggest. So this is a technical support of the AWS because if you choose the basic plan, there is no technical support access. There is no, no response time. If you're going for the developer sort of things, my plan then local business hours, okay, cloud support as access, associates and email sort of things, you will technical support you, you, you get. And then response time is for 24 hours and 12 hours. So this is depend on what type of, you know, what support you would seek. So if your company is enterprise company, then you have to go for the 24 to seven senior cloud support engineers available same time email chat phone you can just call them you can just chat them you can just email them and they will resolve your queries okay and the business critical downtime is 15 minutes so it is it is very really good but it is very costly as well same time so uh, this is the summary of this particular session so the AWS volume uh, Propositions and then AWS Global Infrastructure. We have just discussed, discussed about several key feature services we are just talking about in this uh, uh, series and security and compliance. We are just talking about fundamentals, architecture considerations. We are just talking about the pricing of the AWS, what type of services and support, uh, what type of supports uh, of AWS. Okay, so everything we have just covered in this uh, session. So. Uh, if, if you have any questions and queries, please, uh, you know what, send to me. Uh, on my mail id so then i will strive to do best my things to so, uh, cover all the queries and uh, uh, send you the answers at the same time hello so, okay. yes uh, hi sir this is rahman i have a query related that uh, these ppt can we get yes definitely i will uh, you know what uh, share this ppt to you so uh, just uh, send me uh, uh, on my mail id uh, your questions so or, can you please uh, Message? Can you please type your mail ID on the text bar? Yes, sir. Yeah, Mahesh. Hello. Yes, yeah, Mahesh. Me. Can you? Yeah. Uh, can we have a, a Google Drive or something like that where you can share your all materials once you complete your session? But that would be convenient. Yes, definitely. Yeah. definitely. Yeah. I will just create a Google Drive and uh, share you all the persons at the same time. And uh, also, I will upload this particular slide to my. Uh, or YouTube channel as well, so you can just check it out. Right. Video and right. audio session same time, and uh, I will send you uh, my mail ID as well, so uh, you can just uh, you know what, give me a, a mail, the text mail, so that I will just forward you the slide to you. Right. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank sir, you. Sir, your mail ID along with your phone number. Yes, I, I will just send to you. This is my phone number. You yeah. Just. just... Yeah. Okay, guys, so this is my mail ID and this is my phone number. So you can just text me or you can just uh, uh, 
uh, uh, you know what give me a mail so that I will just uh, provide you the all the slide and everything so the matter of fact that uh, if we are working on the you know what corporate uh, for the past four to five years into this AWS and the Google different, different cloud infrastructure so uh, we have you know what practical scenarios all about this is you know what uh, the, the starting uh, journey of, of this particular AWS tomorrow we will just discuss about some DevOps uh, tools the DevOps techniques which is used in the AWS environment Okay, suppose Jenkins uh, and Chief, Puppet, and Siebel, how we are using, how we are integrated with AWS, what is use cases, how the effectively work in the uh, client side, what is the practical scenario, all sort of things. So that that is also important a scenario which is talking about tomorrow. So be presents tomorrow at the same time and nine o'clock sharp. So that I will so just the, let so the meeting area yeah. will remain the same or it's different. No, I will say uh, I will share. Uh, I will share you. This is a different, uh, uh, you know what, uh, session ID. So I will share you over the uh, the WhatsApp or on this mail ID same same time. Okay, okay. I just ping you my mail, my uh, through WhatsApp. I ping you. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah, Mahesh, is this possible to reschedule it for 9:30, 10:30? So send me the text message. I will just, uh, you know what, uh, provide you the link and everything. So. Tomorrow we will discuss uh, uh, about AWS and DevOps, and then we integrate with each other, and then we will going for some practical things and some and more sir, practical. And so it will be suitable to make a WhatsApp group where we can get all the details related to the training. Yes, I will just create. I will just create the uh, WhatsApp group, uh, group as well. Differently. Yeah, yeah. Sounds so nice. Just give me, uh, give, uh, give me uh, in the on the same mail ID. Just send me your uh, mobile number as well, so that I will just add you same time. Sure, sir. Sure. Sure, I will. Yeah, okay. Nice. okay. Thank you for everybody. Thank you for your time. And uh, tomorrow we will discuss about some DevOps Thank plus. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mahesh. Bye. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.